Hey guys, what's going on? Watomar Melon here today on my second channel again. Make sure to subscribe to my main one and check out the recent collection update video that I posted. Um, but if you guys do enjoy this one, you can subscribe to this channel as well. I'm going to try to do market watches every other day um, or you know, every couple of days as I can. So first off, I wanted to talk about the Dark Magician out of Battle of Chaos with its um, Bandai artwork. This is a really cool card about one per case so it's not too crazy rare um but it's also not the easiest card <coughs> excuse me to pull either and so this one to me is comparable to a ghost rare so when you look at this card you see that near mint first editions are currently going for uh lowest around 105 uh, which doesn't seem too bad, but when I compare it to a lot of the ghosts from Ghosts from the Past, I don't really think that this card is going to be able to sustain this price. I would imagine that the card will fall out further, um, because I would assume most collectors would prefer reprint Ghost Rares as opposed to the Bandai um, Dark Magician. For right now, I think long term the Bandai Dark Magician will probably outperform reprint Ghost Rares. Who knows? Uh, I would assume that to be the case, but right now I would expect it to continue to fall. Um, at least, you know, I, I would say $80 is probably where I, I would be comfortable buying this card. 10,000 Dragon is the next card I wanted to talk about. This to me is like the best modern card that isn't a prize card um, or a reprint of some kind or a super limited promo of some kind. Battles of Legend. Armageddon came out during sort of the height of the pandemic where a lot of people were getting back into the game and 10,000 Dragon to me is a card that is iconic within the Yu-Gi-Oh franchise it's sort of it's the background for Master Duel so people coming into Master Duel are probably going to look up you know what's this cool looking dragon that's in the background it's 10,000 Dragon it's just a beautiful card and uh, I think it's pretty unique with the red text and the 10,000 emboss at the bottom um, as you can see, there have been a couple sales back in uh, um, back in April. However, there haven't been any ones over the past month. And you can see that the lowest listing for a near mint, excuse me, near mint one is going for around uh, fourteen hundred dollars, a little bit more than that, from an unverified seller. Then from a verified seller, you're looking at around fifteen hundred dollars. Um, but there aren't too many copies on the market right now currently 11 listings but it's a beautiful card not the rarest card but still very iconic in my as about as iconic as a new monster in the modern uh, game can be next up we're going to sort of the very this to me is like a low mid-tier um, version of blue eyes white dragon it's a nice way to get a hollow version of the sdk art blue eyes um, for not too expensive and I don't think premium gold rares actually look bad. I think they look quite nice. I think they've gotten, gold rares historically, I think, have gotten the shaft in terms of, you know, the, the claims that people make about how bad they look. I think they look fine. Um, and I think that a lot of casual collectors are actually fans of the, the gold, premium gold rare specifically. You can see you can pick these up for around $15, so not a very expensive card, but still a really nice mid-tier rarity to have. Uh, another... This one's kind of lower tier, um, but I like the art and I like the secret rare out of the Dark Side of Dimensions movie pack. This card has really taken a tumble over the past you know year and a half from its peak back when people were getting back in and they wanted a secret rare Dark Magician Girl. You can see you can pick these up for around uh, a little under 13, and at some point these cards were going for more than 20 in first edition near mint. So. Um, I think now is not a bad time to pick these cards up. Who knows if they're going to continue to go down, but it's a really nice card to have. <clears throat> Next up, again, out of the Dark Side of Dimensions movie pack, Secret Edition, Edition, excuse me, we have Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon. This is a reprint from the Ultra Rare out of Legendary Duelist, um, White Dragon Abyss, something like that. Um, pretty cheap card. Still a really cool looking card. I really like the way this card looks, but I think there are just so many of this card printed that it's probably not going to ever be too expensive. You can see that um, the near mint first deads are going for around three bucks, so not a bad card to pick up. 
uh, and pretty cheap to do it. So next up we have Gemini Elf out of the Lost Art. This is another one that I want. Most of the cards that I'm showing this week are ones that are kind of on my list of possible buys. Um, you can see that you can pick these up for under four bucks. Really cool card. I think it, you're getting a pretty decent card for under four dollars. Like this is one that I feel like is a pretty good, like I feel very comfortable with paying four dollars for this card. Um, I could see this being worth 20, but you know, it seems to be the case that a lot of these were printed and they're just having trouble selling them. So who knows? Barrel Dragon, another cool lost art that's pretty cheap. Um, you can pick these up for around four bucks, similar to the uh, Gemini Elf. Just a cool one to keep your eye on. I think that this artwork of Barrel Dragon is really cool, but I do like the other artwork as well. I think they're both cool. Ring of Destruction at a Pharaonic Guardian, near mint first edition. You're looking at around 70 bucks. When you compare it to a lot of the modern cards, I think that getting a vintage secret rare in near mint condition is not bad at $70. Like, that's really, really good in my opinion. And it's a bit surprising to me that you can still get cards like this for so cheap. Um, when these modern cards are going kind of crazy in prices. Like, would you rather have this first edition Secret Rare Ring of Destruction or this Dark Magician uh, from Battle of Chaos? To me, I would pick oh, the Ring of Destruction every day of the week. And another trap card, first edition Secret Rare, probably more iconic than Ring of Destruction out of Labyrinth of Nightmares, Magic Cylinder. You can pick these up for under $70 at $69.69. So, I mean... This is the problem with modern cards for me. It's just like when I compare what I can get for the same price or less, why would I pick up that Bandai Art Dark Magician when I can get these really cool first edition Secret Rares um, in pretty good condition? Next up, we have Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus. Expensive card, near mint condition, unlimited. You're looking, well, here's a one with photos. You'd have to check out what those photos look like, but if you want one that's not there aren't any qualifications on you can see that it's going for a little under 200 and near mint on limb and then if you want a verified seller it's going up to 375 on the near mint first edition so very cool card um i love sapphire pegasus but man is that card hard to get next up we have eradicator epidemic virus another beautiful card out of force of the breaker um this time a secret rare i was gonna pick these up and then I think there's some strategy that's currently in the meta where you can use this card and it's actually like a playable card. And then, you know, obviously all these old secret rares just appear, disappeared off the market. You can get near mints from a verified seller at around 80. And then near mint first editions, you're looking at around 145. But still a very cool card. Would not mind owning that one. Uh, next up, we've got Bajinti. Amaterasu Ghost Rare. This card looks really nice in person if you've never seen it. You can see that its trajectory on the, the first editions has gone down and down. There's recently a sale for 36. You can see that there's one at 32 with $1 shipping, and then you also have 36 for near mint first editions, and then the on limbs you can get for under 28, which is pretty incredible. I, again, is this worth it relative to the Ghosts from the Ghost from the Past 2. Like, if I can get a Blue Eyes Ultimate for only twice the price of this in Ghost Rare, am I going to buy the Blue Eyes Ultimate or this? I don't know. But it's just a, it's a really cool looking card. Next up, we have Mobius the Frost Monarch Ultimate Rare. You guys know I love this card. Near Mint First Edition. So, this is a very lightly played at first ed. Um, so, that's around 100. Don't think that's a bad deal. And then if you want a true near mint that's not sun faded, um, you're looking at close to 200 on the Mobius. I don't know. This is a really playable card, and I think a lot of these have just ended up in people's hands that are playing this in GOAT format or what have you, whatever format they want. And it's not one that really needs to come off the market. So I think that people really underestimated sort of the lost era of Yu-Gi-Oh!, I call Lost Era being uh, Soul of the Duelist, Rise of Destiny, Flaming Eternity. It just so happens that there's so much Rise of Destiny printed that uh, the retail Ultimate Rares, so those are the cards that normally appear as rares in the set, um, there's so many of the sneak peek packs printed, and these are the ones where you can only get uh, rare cards as Ultimate Rare. There's so many of those out there that it's just hard to hold value when there's so many of them out there. But the Hobby Ultimate Rares... 
still Rise of Destiny seems to be printed a lot even in hobby, but I think some of them are, are quite nice. But Soul of the Duelist and Flaming Eternity for sure don't have a huge supply, and Flaming of Eternity is even more scarce than Soul of the Duelist from what I can tell. Um, so those cards just don't come on the market that often. Next up, we have Majestic Red Dragon. I didn't do any 5Ds last week, so I wanted to do some this week. We've got my favorite set in Absolute Power Force, the Ghost Rare from it, Majestic Red Dragon. Very cool looking card. Uh, Near Mint First Dead, you're looking at around 200 from a verified seller. If we go back, you can see that Near Mint on Limbs are around 75, and from an unverified seller, you can get a Near Mint First for 188 if you include shipping. I don't know. I haven't really traced this card. I think I had, I definitely had a unlimb version of this at some point, but I sold it. Um, maybe I'll get back to collecting some of these synchro ghost rares because they do look quite nice. Another signer dragon ghost rare. We have black wing dragon and uh, ghost rare. This will be the last card that we talk about. Near mints hard to find, hard to come by. You can find one at one thirty five plus five dollar shipping. Um, and then it goes up, and then near mint first dead are around 379. I've had a number of these in like mint first edition, but I've sold all of them. Um, not a card that I'm super into, but still a beautiful card, I must say. Shining Darkness also has great print quality, so it's pretty easy to grade these. But um, let me know what you guys thought. Subscribe if you're new. As always, it's been your boy Watts Homer Melon. Subscribe to my other channel, and peace out.